Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque live painting on Thursday, July 30th, where we are painting our Jangle in July um, box that shipped on July 5th and 6th. And this is our Jangle and our two snowbirds. And we went through opening the box last week and we started with our Jangle, so um, this is what we will be picking up with where we left off. We'll put that aside and let's see we got a couple little things so we had started with our jangle and we had base coated him our black brown and then we started with our peach fuzz dry brushing his little face um, so that's where we're gonna pick up at and we had a couple little quick things um, we have our hedgehog box which is our next bo box it's um, hedgy heaven I think Courtney's calling it so we have a mama bigger size one and then the two smaller size ones. I did do all three of their faces the same but I am working on a um, the larger hedgehog to do the brown muzzle because that actually adds a lot of more character to, to them so we'll have an example of that um, picture tomorrow. So we will do that on one of these when we're doing our painting so if you don't want the real light color for the whole face you'll be able to do the muzzle um, with, the, with the brown and then the um, lighter color around the outside so you'll have two options on how to paint those and you can add extra ones of these to your box if you just message us and let us know what you want Courtney will add it to your invoice and then we'll cover the shipping on those and Courtney posted I think just a little while ago our 12, 12 days of Christmas and today is our last day um, we're using tomorrow to let anyone add stuff that we still have left. We had a um, really good sale, so now we know for next year to help for our um, planning purposes too. So we have our beginners. This is a beginner's brush set that I kind of created for someone that's really just starting out. It's got some um, nylon painting brushes in it. It's got a, um, three dry brushes in it. It's got a liner brush in it. And then also a base coating brush. Um, and we call this Brenda's Beginner's Brush Set because I kind of hand picked these. Um, so we can just show you more. So it's just a basic budget friendly um, set if you're just starting out. So these would be your, these are the nylon brushes that are in three sizes and you would like base coat your elf or you can paint things out um, with those. Then these are the um, bore, brush, bore bristle brushes that are used for dry brushing. You have three sizes. And then we have a nice little liner brush. It's our Royal Majestic 5-0 liner, so it would be good for doing eyes and detail on your piece. And then here's a nice um, kind of a base coating brush and glazing brush. So that's just a nice beginner brush set. So this brush set is $29.99, and with each of our brush sets, for the 12 days of Christmas, today being the 12th, you will get the Harold's Brush Pad Cleaner. And that you just put in the bottom of your bowl of water. And I've been painting here tonight before we started, so you can see my water's really dirty. It really, And you just brush back and forth, and that gets all the paint out of your brushes. Um, so that is the, the little extra for the Christmas um, in July. It's the set of brushes, and then you get the Harold's Brush Pad. And then we have another set, which is our um, basic beginners budget friendly dry brush set. And we have a set of flat brush brushes and a set of round brushes from the large down to the small one. And these are Royal and Lang Nickel. These are good, nice um, quality budget friendly brushes as well. I have some that are like 15 years old. So we have the round set and the flat set, and those are also $29.99. And if you ordered the, the, a set of these, you would also get a Harold's brush pad cleaner in, in that set. And then we have our last set, which is our Artist Paintbrush brand dry brushes. And these are also bore bristle brushes. Um, these are also the brushes that are coming in your boxes from May through December. It's the same, same brushes. Try to get them lined up here in size. So we have the round brushes, and then we have the flat brushes from... Um, size 8, 5, uh, 3, and 1. And then, and then the same with the round. We have the same thing and we have the flat. And these are how much, Courtney? 42. 
And these are $42, and then you would get the Harold's brush pad with this set also. Um, this is a better quality, um, costs a little more, but they're really nice. They shape, spring back right into shape. They don't get all um, frizzy and fuzzed out. Um, the paint seems to go on really well and easy with these brushes. I really, really like, like them. Um, we tried them out last year and, and liked them so much we offered them as a extra um, in our fist boxes so we're really uh, pleased to have them and uh, and you can uh, purchase another set if you'd want another set and then you would as our Christmas in July you'll get the Harold's brush pad cleaner with those as well so today is the last day of our Christmas in July sale um, we give it giving you an extra day tomorrow um, so anyone that wants anything added to your invoice you can let us know um, you'll have till tomorrow yet some stuff has sold out um, so we'll get restocked on that stuff as well so then our next box is our is our hedgehog box and you get the three and that will ship on August um, 5th and 6th Courtney will be um, invoicing any subscribers on the 1st and you will have till midnight on the 4th central time to pay and I'm working on a little extra project um, for that box. And as you can see, it has something to do with eyes. And we'll have a little more detail about that at the end of the show tonight. So that's kind of a little surprise I'm working on. It's gonna be an extra um, in the box and we'll let you know what that's really all about. Um, so that's um, that's also in your, gonna also be in that August box. So, and everybody has trouble with eyes. So I think it'll be a fun, fun extra for you guys to have we'll let you know what it what it's going to be so now we are going to go ahead and start with our little jangle here and we're going to pick up where we left off and i do want to do the whole step i don't want to start at this point and then show show it to you completely done because um, some people can have trouble with dry brushing and i want you to see that it um it, it does take time and the whole process so that you know that it just doesn't happen with the snap of a finger so we have our OS492 Peach Fuzz. And another little thing is Courtney figured out last week how to upload our videos onto YouTube with the closed caption for the hearing impaired. So you can look forward to that now as well um, to help out our hearing impaired um, clients. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of my Peach Fuzz onto my foil and you can use your, your um, tile or your styrofoam plate, whatever works for you. And I want to grab my dry brushes, which I didn't get out of my container here yet tonight because I was painting. So let's see, I need a kind of a medium one here. And of course, I want the purple ones because I like those. So I guess I'll just grab them all out of here quick. Oh, but I just put the handle in the paint. So we'll grab those out quick. Hope everyone had a great week. It's been a busy week here because I'm working on getting all the hedgehogs poured, cleaned, and fired, and I actually brought them all to Courtney today on the last batch. She has them a whole week early, basically, so that should make her life easier for um, bubble wrapping and getting them ready for you guys for us to ship on the 5th. They will ship on the 5th and the 6th. Um, we do have, I think she said, six boxes left yet. If anyone wants to um, get in on a box, you can either message us or go right on Brenda's brushstrokesandbisque.com and subscribe, and then you will um, get the August box yet. Um, so that's kind of where that's at. We do have one or two of Jangle in July's left yet, and then we do have some bisque of the extras, which was Jingle and Pepperminster as well. So I worked on getting some more of those done. So now I just have my um, dry brush, my hog bristle dry brush. It's an artist paintbrush. It's a size five. I don't want a really big paintbrush um, dry brush because I don't have a huge, huge area. And I don't want a really tiny one either because I don't want it to take all night. So we're going to go with our about a size five. Should work really well. So I'm just going to dab into my peach fuzz and brush it out onto my paper towel. And you can use a brown paper bag or a, um, some people use coffee filters, some people use t-shirts, whatever works for you. I just use the paper towel. 
and you want to dry brush back and forth across any textures and you want to slowly build up your um, skin color your flesh color and you could use other colors if you wanted him uh, more white or more brown there's nothing wrong with that use whatever you would like um, we did have a couple questions about dry brushing the flesh um, it does take quite a bit of time to build up that flesh color um, you just kind of have to be patient with it you don't want to get too much on at one time um, and you don't want to brush with a really really super dry brush because then it will get um, very cake like or powdery like um, so you just want a nice kind of a dry brush and you just keep brushing back and forth and keep building it up now if your base coat is not smooth and you have puddles or ridges those are going to show through um, on your dry brushing um, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. You can either fire your piece and have it fired off, or you could take a piece of really fine sandpaper and try to sand off that puddle or ridge that you might have. And then rebase coat it with the black brown and um, dry brush, try dry, br dry brushing again. So I do go from his face to his hands. I'll let the area on his face kind of dry and I'll dry brush on his little hand. Make sure you get the back. So we also have, um, for our anniversary, Courtney had posted a um, post about we're giving away a August subscription box. And if you commented and shared on that post, she is currently right now in the kitchen cutting up everyone's name that posted on there and your name was going into the drawing and we were going to draw the winner of an August subscription box. So if you're a subscriber, um, I don't, I'm not sure how she's gonna do it, if she'll just give you the net, the, um, refund your money or invoice you or what, we'll, I'm sure she's got it all figured out though. Um, if you're not a subscriber, then you'll get the box for free and we'll have, have you email us your um, address and she'll take care of that when we're boxing things up. So that's coming too at the end of the show. So make sure you um, hang tight so we can see who the winner is of our free one month subscription box. So I'm just dry brushing um, just lightly back and forth, making sure I go ac across any texture. You don't want to go with it in, in the crevices because then it will fill them in. Um, it, it does take time though, though to do the, get that skin color on there and you just got to be really patient about it. And just keep building it up. Um, if you if you're brushing out your brush too much and it's too dry, it'll get very powdery, powdery cake cake like makeupy looking. Um, and then you you just want to not brush your brush out quite as much, so you got a little more paint in there. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, and you just you just keep building it up. And it does take take time. I know we had a couple of questions about it and, and that's why I want it, want to actually dry brush the whole face here and, and not show you a piece that's already at that finished point because I want you to see that, that it takes time to build this up and it, it's actually pretty ugly um, at points in it until you get you get it built up and like on where his face and his hair is I'm making sure I'm going to, across his hair I'm not going with it if I go with it, that's going to fill in that um, crevice there and we're going to lose our shading detail. So you do want to keep changing the direction of your brush depending upon where you are um, with whatever um, crevices or indents or textures there. Here by his nose, I'm going across it again because we have that little ring around his nose and we want to keep that dark brown for his little shading. So I think um, Courtney's going to have to get the, she don't have my tablet on, so I can't ex answer questions yet, but as soon as she gets the, all the little names, um, all your names cut up from the um, subscription box, I'll be able to see the, I'll have her get the um, tablet going so I can see any questions. Um, the, the flesh part is probably going to be the hardest part, um, but just be patient. Um, just keep building it up. And, and I'm not beating really hard with the brush. I'm just gently brushing back and forth 
um, grabbing a little of the peach fuzz and, and just keep just keep building it up go from one area to the next so that the other area can dry and that helps the paint stick better if it can dry a little bit and keep turning your piece around so you can see it from different angles um, you basically want the flesh covered with the peach you really only want the brown left down in the crevices and so that does take a little time to build that up. So Courtney's got the tablet here. She'll check in with us and see if we got any questions going on. Courtney thinks we're okay. Um, so yep, if you're having questions or problems with your flesh, just keep just keep at it. Just keep slowly building it up. Trying to go across across your. Um, crevices and textures. I mean, if you wanted, you could you could paint that in, but then, um, like you can see, the the dark brown, the black brown is starting here. You, you're going to lose that shading if you actually paint it. Um, but that that's an option too. You could paint it and then antique it later. I mean, that that would work too. But you'd probably have to antique your whole piece then. Um, but you just keep just keep dry brush into it and it'll it'll slowly but surely add up add up and um, get to the degree of flesh color that we need so I'm just gonna keep going here make sure I get down under his little chin and just keep brushing away just go from one area to the next so that they can keep drying. So let's see, Courtney's got the tablet here for me, so let's see. Everyone says hello, so hello to everyone as well. So we'll keep... Hmm? Um, that water. Courtney's going to change my water bowl because I was painting those eyes before we um, got live here tonight. Um, I'm trying to get that done so it can be included in your boxes, which will be a lot of fun, I'm thinking. So we're just gonna keep building our stuff up here, building up this flesh, and you can see it's getting less and less of the um, black-brown, but you just gotta keep, keep going at it. And you don't want your brush too wet because then you could end up filling in the, the crevices where you want that black brown to stay. So let's see, we ordered molds, was that this week, Courtney, or last week? Probably last week, huh? Last week. I think we ordered our clay magic molds last week. Um, Courtney did see a post where someone posted the Gangbuster Yeti, so I'm guessing we're going to have to call and have that added. Um, I don't think Clay Magic posted um, what what's new yet, other than um, there was one post and that was the trailer, and we did order we ordered that the day that that came out. That's the day we ordered, um, so that is on our order. But I know I know where everyone's waiting for Clay Magic's new um, latest releases, so we'll see what we can add. Um, I have noticed that the prices are continually creeping up so that's kind of an issue but everything's creeping up everywhere so I guess we can't point fingers or anything we just have to see what we can do but we are waiting to see what what else they're coming out with I'm ex suspecting it's gonna be a lot of Christmas stuff um, I think there's usually a snowman this time of the year too so we'll we'll see so you can see that his, his flesh color is slowly coming here. You just got to keep keep brushing away at it. So Cordy says we got a question. What's our question? Let's see. Hello. Do repainting the black brown on the areas that you think get the flesh color on or will the other colors um, cover the area? Usually the other colors will co cover the area pretty much. I usually don't um, go back and touch up the black brown so the other the other colors will pretty much cover up whatever we're getting like on his little shirt here once we get to the rust the rust is going to cover that up um, his hair 
that's a brown, so that's going to cover that up too. If it was a yellow hair, we might go ahead and put the black brown on first, but I think um, for this guy, it'll, it'll be fine. So usually, usually that little bit that gets onto the, the other areas, that's not usually a big deal. The, the next color will cover it up. Um, you just want to be sure you're leaving that black brown down in, in the crevices. That's the main thing. Um, so he's still looking spotty, so he still needs more. So we're just going to keep slowly brushing around here. And I do like to do, it's like a C-stroke or a half circle. Um, that kind of like blends the paint down in there a little better, I think, instead of just going back and forth. Um, but everybody has their own preferences. So I'm actually doing like a little, little they're really fast, but they're like little C-strokes. And that just seems to like, blend the, the paint right down in there better um, but do what works for you so Helen says you have a question oh yep I think we got, we took care of it there Helen thank you though um, I didn't have the tablet right away Courtney's cutting up the names for everyone that registered for the our subscription box for our anniversary gift it was kind of something special she came up with so we went with it and we're gonna draw the winner at the end of tonight and we'll show you the eye the eye thing that I'm working on for the August box um, I have about half of the September box poured um, which is the monsters to go with mr. and mrs. Frankie that we had last year um, if you're a new subscriber and didn't get that box you you could you will be able to order mr. and mrs. Frankie to go with it um, we also have the little girl witch to go with it, so that'll be extra bisque you can add to your boxes. Um, extra bisque that fits in the boxes, we do cover the shipping on. Courtney just adds them, um, the cost of the bisque to your um, invoice. The same with if you wanted paints or brushes or other supplies that we carry. Um, you just send us a message instead of, um, don't check out on the website because then it's going to charge you shipping. Um, so if you know what you want, just send us a message right on Facebook. And then Courtney adds that to a spreadsheet, and, and then on the first, when she goes through and sends invoices, she adds everything to everybody's invoices, and then we cover the shipping just as long as it, it's something that fits in your box. Now, I did uh, post a bunch of pictures earlier this week of um, molds that I was pouring. Um, some of them are, were pretty big things, like the witches, though those will not fit in the BIS box. Uh, but... You still can certainly buy them and just pay, and pay the shipping on those. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that those those bigger items won't fit in in the BIS box, um, but we'll we we'll still have them available for you if you want to purchase them. Are they ten inches or twelve inches? Also, Cordy asked if they're ten or twelve inches. They're oh, at least twelve inches or more. Yeah, um, they, I don't think they're going to fit in the BIS box even by themselves, just because of their height. Um, so, and if on our website, I mean, we have other bisque. If there's something on there you see you want and it's in stock, you can just message us. With, and if it fits in your box, we'll cover the shipping and ship it to you. Um, still working on getting a lot of stuff poured because it was um, the middle of May when I retired from um, work. But I'm just getting caught up now. Like I said, it was today I brought all the bisque for um, our August box, which is the first time I've gotten... Um, this got it got it here this early for Courtney to wrap but I had I had help with my from my sister and niece so that was a huge 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 help to, to get to that milestone so um, it, it's getting there it's just that it, it all takes time um, and we've also had a few projects in between like um, we've had molds that we went to the other side of the state to get and um, then we couldn't get into the storage shed and they had to go to another place temporarily until we could get into the storage shed because the road was out. Um, now they're in the storage shed so that like took a whole extra day out of our schedule but um, they're there and we do have two more loads, U-Haul loads of molds to get. Um, so that'll be another couple days. So that, that takes out of the time of being able to pour and clean and fire but it, it's getting there and just trying to build up that inventory and, and add to our supply inventory. And um, we are going to the August show in Waukesha. Um, we're not vendors there this year because of the 
COVID stuff, but we are um, hoping to go and pick up supplies. And maybe we'll run into some few people that um, want to meet us. We could probably set up a meeting time, maybe at noon or something in the atrium, because we're not, we don't want to spend all day there with the COVID because it's actually rising um, in the state of Wisconsin. So we're going to kind of pick up our supplies and kind of head out. Um, uh, but maybe next year we'll, um, I don't know if we'll have a booth or what we're going to do, but something. Um, so you can see I'm just slowly adding my um, peach fuzzy here, and he's slowly getting his little um, face to look like um, flesh and not ugly, blotchy, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> disease. But he's looking pretty good. He's got his black brown down in his crevices and it's giving him his shadowing or getting it on his hands so you can see it, it does it does take quite a bit of brushing to get that um, peach flesh color um, to cover really well and not be splotty and blotchy and pretty ugly so we're just going to get a little bit more here because I can still see some speckles through it on areas that are kind of high areas and we want those covered pretty good um so D you had a question about um, the dry the dry brushing up I know Courtney said you sent questions and I think I was gonna have her re read those to me can you reread them to me Courtney mm -hmm. I know the one was about dry brushing because you had questioned that and it just takes time um, to build up that color and you do need to, to brush out that base coat really well so you don't have ridges um, coming through underneath where you can see it. And if you have that, you can just use um, like some fine sandpaper and try to sand it off. Or if you know someone with a kiln, um, you can have them actually do a 04 firing and it'll burn the acrylic paints right off. So Courtney said it was the, you had the question about the face of Jangle and what else? Okay, and about um, not sure about putting enough paint on the brush to dry brush. You, d you don't really have hardly any paint on your brush, actually. Um, I can maybe bring it in closer here. So I just take my brush, and I'm just touching the very edge. And maybe I can hold that up. Um, Courtney's going to zoom in, so let's hold on. And it, it doesn't take a lot of paint. I just have a little puddle here. It's probably not even a quarter of a teaspoon. So I have my dry brush and I just touch a few of those bristles right on the edge of that paint. So you can see that that's not much, much paint. Then I take my brush, Courtney's giving me directions here, back, and now you want to um, take that and brush that paint out. There's So when you're brushing, now you, you can see this first stroke there was a lot of paint. Now when I'm stroking, you can barely see any paint. That, that, that's how much paint is in your brush, not much. And that's what gives that really soft, um, shaded, um, gradual change of color. So again, I just grabbed that little bit of paint and brushed it out. You can see there's hardly anything in that brush, but it's still discoloring that paper towel a little bit. And now I just brush actually quite a few times until I feel that there's nothing coming out. Again, I go and just touch the ed edge of that little puddle, brush it out, and you can see there's a, a, pr a pretty prominent mark at first, but then after that, when I brush over here, you can see there's hardly any um, color there at all, but then you come and you brush on your piece, and if I, I can actually brush on his brown, you can see that there's paint in there. See, there's still paint in there, and that, that's how that's building up really slowly. Now that I, just, that I will cover up with the black brown before we go any further, but I just wanted um, everyone to see that even though you're brushing that out and it seems like there's nothing in that brush, when you brush on that brown, you can see that there's still paint in there and you just keep building it up. See how it's building up compared to one or two strokes here? So we'll cover that up with our black brown, but hopefully that helps um, explain how how dry brushing is working. It's just that little bit of paint in there and it just slowly builds up your colors. So hopefully that um, helps. But I just touched the edge of my um, color 
And I just keep doing these little half circles, just kind of blending it right in there. You can see he's got a pretty smooth, even complexion now. It's not real spotty and blotchy like it was when we started. It's a little light um, up here. I can still see the brown through there, so I'm just going to get a little more up here. And I'm just brushing across my texture of his little forehead and onto his little ears. And we want to make sure, I want to look at him um, head on, make sure both ears kind of got the same amount of coloring. I want to make sure I get the back of that ear, the back of his hands. And we want to look at the side over here. I probably didn't pay too much attention to that. So even his ear, there's this um, little indent in there, and, and that's really only where you want the brown. You don't want like that whole center dark brown. Um, you just want that little bit of brown in, in that crevice of that ear so it looks like it's shading. And that's what's going to make his ear look, um, give it dimension. So hopefully that kind of helps explain um, Um, so, um, so um, that that could be so. Like usually, I, I start in one area, and I like work my way over. I kind of always go clockwise. Wise, probably. I think I probably do the same thing. Then I go to this hand, and then I go to this other hand. I'll go to the back, the back of the ear, and then I come back around, and then I'll start over here at this ear again. So this is drying. This air would be area would be drying while I was back here, and now the back is drying while I'm doing the front. So you, you kind of do want it to dry a little bit in, be, in between. You don't want to do the same, like this area. You wouldn't want to do that constantly until it's the right color. You want to start in one area, work your way around, get the whole thing one, one layer of color, then you start again and then you go another shade stronger of that color and, and you just keep working it around. So hopefully that will, will help you. Because that, even though it's not very long, the, the paint dries fairly, fairly quickly. Um, if the paint isn't drying, it's probably going to be more smeary. Um, would probably be more of the problem. So great, I hope if it, if it does indeed send, us, send me another message and another picture and I'll um, take a look at it and we'll see what we can do. But I, I do just start in one area and work my way around. Um, that way this is drying and then you just keep um, coming back around. And it, it just, it does take a lot of layers um, to get it to this, this color because when we started it, it was looking more like this tonight. Um, so I'm just going to grab my black brown and touch that up quick because I want that to dry. Let me see, where's the black brown? I kind of moved colors around here tonight already. Okay, thank you. I brought colors from home to paint the hedgehogs because they were in a in their own little... I had those colors separate from last week, so I... And Cordy has these colors separate for me so I didn't want to pull the wrong one. So now I just, uh, where I was showing you how the color builds up, I just grabbed some of my black brown and I'm just gonna brush that out nice and smooth and we'll get that covered back up. And then that'll dry while we're doing the next step that we do. Now if you say you did want his hair like a really light color um, you could take your black brown and really carefully um, just cover that up and try to get just to where that little crevice is where the um, hair meets the face. You don't want to overdo it so that it's real strong because it, you want it um, like a gradual shading of color. So I'm just tapping really light just to build it up back up a little bit. So if you wanted to do that, you could do that, but you don't necessarily have to. So you can see you can cover that back up a little bit if you want. But I, I didn't go all the way down. I went right to where that crevice is and kind of let the crevice so it had its natural shading from our dry brushing. 
So I'm going to just brought, wash that out. And let's see what do our instructions tell us to do next. They say to dry brush rust on his shirt, shoes, and the hat, but avoid the hat band and tassel. Okay, so anytime that I'm doing um, red, I like to have rust underneath there. Um, it helps the, the red come through better. Red can be a really um, challenging color. It's a lot better than it used to be, um, especially with glazes. It can be more challenging, but they've actually improved it a lot over the years. Um, so we're, we're going to use, I'm, I have Doc Holiday DH28 Rust. rust. Um, Duncan also has rust, so you could use that. It's just a rust pumpkin -y, harvest pumpkin type color. That's a good color to have underneath your um, reds when you're doing reds. It just, red covers better um, when you have that rust or even a, it could be like terracotta, any, anything in that color range. So now we have a pretty big area here to do, so I'm not gonna go, I don't wanna pick a little bitty brown, little bitty brush, I want something bigger. Um, and I don't want too big either. Let me see, I gotta wash out a brush here that I was using before with the hedgehogs before we got on. So hold tight. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna go with this um, size five again. Size five is probably a really popular size that I use a lot of. Um, especially for this size of stuff. So again, I'm just I have my um, rust there. I'm gonna grab some new paper toweling, and I'm just gonna again take my edge of edge of my brush, and I'm just just getting the the tip with rust in it, and I'm gonna brush that out. So you can see there was a lot, and now there's just a little. And let me see, we're doing his boots, his shirt, and then the top of his hat. So I'm just going to brush back and forth here. And so I'm just going, again, I want to make sure I'm going across any of the crevices. So like his um, little booties here, there's a, like a little indent in at the bottom of, and then between each booty, so you want to go across. So you always have to be changing the direction of your brush and over when you get closer to the tree bark it's okay if you brush onto the tree bark because the brown is going to cover it up and, and you won't get it all in one setting um, you won't get this to the complete rust all at once that that's where i started in one one spot and now i'm going to work my way this way I can't really go that way because the tree trunk is there, but I can come this way. So I'm going to come all the way around on his little booties. And that way, as I'm going this way, this area is going to dry so that when I get back to it, it's going to take the paint easier because it's dry. So hopefully that helps. And then, of course, you always want to do those bottoms so I can kind of see that his little boots line up over here to the back. So from here over to here is also going to be the rust because you always want to do your bottoms to make sure your bottoms look as good as their tops. Um, that's really important especially if you're helping any 4-H kids um, for judging. The judges will always look at their bottoms so make sure you have them doing the bottoms. So now we kind of have his front covered with the rust so I, I'm just going to keep turning him and building up that. And when it seems like I got pretty decent coverage there with that first layer. I just keep turning him, grabbing that little bit of mixture. Oh, I just stuck my fingers in it, guys. Um, I was trying to move it so you could see to make sure you could see what I'm doing. Just grabbing that little bit on the edge, brushing it out really good so you don't have a glob. And then just brush back and forth across those textures and crevices. So even though those booties are very smooth, we can still um, dry brush them. We can still build up that red color. Actually, the rust color right now, but we'll get to the red. It's just that where, where these crevices are here, we want to go across, and where this one is, we want to go across in the other direction. If we were to go with it in that same direction, we would fill it in, and it would be all, we would lose our shading, and it wouldn't give our piece as much dimension as it does to have that shading. So now I have a fairly good layer on, on his little booties here. And I just kind of come back and look. 
And then I just grab some more and now we'll go up to his little um, shirt. And we're going to let those booties dry and we're going to get a nice even coat onto the shirt and onto the hat. And you could do these guys in any colors you want. I just did the tr um, traditional red. Just seemed like a good um, color to do. I did do the other ones. They have the same colors, but they have different different colored hats and different colored buttons and different colored, um, oh, let's see, buttons, hats, and their little tights are what are really different. But you can see that this it's just building up nice and slow. So when I get over here by the hands, I don't want, I want to be careful, I don't want to get all that um, rust all over his hand, so I have to redo it again. So you, you can change to a smaller brush. I, I tend to start away from the hand and just do little, little C strokes, and you can go either way, and just nudge my way up to the hand, and that way I'm not getting my whole hand full of my um, rust. The same thing over on this side here, I'll start away, and just lightly do those, they're just little bitty, little bitty strokes, maybe like a quarter inch even. And I can build that rust right up to that hand without doing it. Now I may need to touch it up a little bit, but, but I'm not brushing crazy and getting the whole hand full of rust. Um, otherwise you're kind of re, you're going to just be reworking it all night long. And you can see that that um, is a little bit lighter underneath there because of that flesh color, but as we slowly get the um, rust on there, the next layer or two, it, it's going to cover it up and you won't know that that light color was under there at all. So again, I'm just doing these little, little padding, little C strokes, starting away from the hand and then just working up to it. And if you're not comfortable with that, you can also just grab a little or brush, but you would probably still be making those little bitty strokes because you don't want to brush that all full of, paint, of the rust. You want to just get it right on the right up to the edge where the crevice is there. So you just take your time and now here I got more uh, more area. I don't need to worry about getting any any flesh colored full of rust so I can make these bigger bigger strokes here on the on the sleeve. You want to get down in there. And now we're over here by his shirt on the front and you can just, even the little um, button tabs, don't worry about those because we'll be painting those with silver. So we just want to build that up so I can do those bigger strokes here because there's no um, flesh in the way. Hopefully I got the thing in the screen. Courtney's still cutting up drawing numbers. We must have had quite a few people post, huh Courtney? Oh, she's on to the next thing. I can't see with the light. Okay. So now I'm just going to turn him around so I can um, see better here. So again, we have our flesh on his little bottom of his sleeve. I'm going to start away and just slowly work up to it. And you just slowly get that rust on there without getting the whole hand full of rust. And, and, and if you do get some on, that's not a big deal. You can just, once you're done with the rust and the red, you can go back and touch up that um, hand with the peach fuzz. Um, let's see, the peach fuzz has a different, that's the name change one, right? It used to be, it's cargo pants now and it was peach fuzz. No. Nope, uh, it's the other way around. Used to be peach fuzz was angel flesh. Okay, so um, earlier um, Duncan changed a couple of the flesh colors. Um, so this peach Fuzz was previously called angel flesh, so you could have um, the, numbers are the, same. Um, the numbers are the same, but the paint names are different, so that's um, nothing to worry about. It's just the um, they just um, changed the name of it from angel flesh to peach fuzz. I don't know why, but um, so here we're up here by his little um, face again, where the flesh got onto the collar, and I'm just just. You just want to brush real gently and slowly, just nudge your, start away from it and work up close to it. That way you can see right where your rust is going. So 
So grab a little and brush it out. And if you're not, again, not comfortable with this bigger brush, um, just switch to a littler one. But you can see I've started down at the bottom and worked around, and then now, I, now I'm coming back around, and all this other area is drying while we're, we're doing that. So when we get this all covered, we can go back down there, and then that paint will stick on there really nice. So let's see, do we have any other questions? No, kind of a quiet night here tonight. Is everyone working on their um, jangles, or did you guys already do them? Everyone enjoying the hot summer? It's been, um, Courtney says miserable. It seems like it's been in the 90s every time we turn around. Although it's only going to be in the 80s, I think, this weekend. So. so I'm just dry brushing away here. Oh, so we were talking about the boxes. So our August box is our hedgehogs. Our September box is the monsters that will go with Mr. and Mrs. Frankie that we had last year. And if you're new, um, since then, you can um, just message us and we can add those to your invoice if you want them. There's also a girl witch that can be added on. We um, got her. Then um, October will be the new Scarecrow stack, the shorter version that um, Play Magic just released on their last release. And then a pumpkin will go with that. And then let's see, what was the next one was November, which is the our Christmas theme. <laughs> Cordy says no one knows what that box is, and I just forgot what it was. Oh, it has to do with um, gnomes. Let's just put it at that. <laughs> so, um, and then we are working on um, what we're going to order for our December box, which is a snowman theme. Um, I sent you a picture last night of a snowman. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. With the welcome sign? Mm -hmm. oh. So we have to um, get those molds ordered yet. And we're waiting for our order to come from Clay Magic, but they're about four weeks behind, so that'll be another two weeks for sure. So you can see I'm just slowly building up this rust on, on his little shirt. I did this area and I'm working down to the, un the underneath part here and then our little boots are still drying and well, the time we get back to those they'll be ready to take more paint so that was a little wet you can see that that's really shiny looking if it's really shiny looking um, when you put your paint on that meant your brush is too wet and you could brush it out some more on your paper towel so Cordy says we got a question so let me take a look here so let's see, you have great instructions. Oh, thank you. So let's see, Vicki's working on her gnomes yet. Connie's dry brushing rust. Oh, good for you, Connie. And Jessica says, what is the smaller size brush you use most? I need it. Um, well, for the dry brush, um, it's probably um, this one or this three. And are you, is she a subscriber? Because she, you'll she be getting them in your box, but you can order them too. Um, as far as a liner, um, I just did those eyes and I used this, um, our artist paintbrush, our 58550. Um, so this is actually called a script liner. So you can see that the, the actual um, bristles on it are longer in our... Um, July box um, attached to your anniversary card. At the back of it, we included this 595 5 liner. So it's also a 5 liner, um, but it's considered a detail liner. We'll see if we can you know, grab some paper towel here. Hopefully that'll help you see better. We should have some dry brushes. Oh, what dry brushes? Okay. Um, but long, I guess as long as we're on this, we'll t finish talking about it anyway, because we do have new people. So these are both 5-0 liners, but the one on the left with the longer one is called a script liner, and the one on the right, which was attached to your anniversary card in your July box, is called a detail liner. So they're both very good brushes. I prefer the script liner because it's longer, and you can hold, it holds more point paint in it, so you can paint further with it. Um, 
a lot of people don't like them, but when, once you use them and just practice with them, you'll you'll love them, and you'll probably won't even go back to the little detail shorter liners. The the, the script liners are wonderful. Huh? Yes. Oh, the dry brush. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see that. So probably the smallest dry brush is this size one, would be the smallest one, and and um, we all actually use that on our little um, birds that we're gonna do. So I probably have a couple of these in my container. So if they drop um, late, then they want to get the dry brushes that were in the previous boxes. Mm -hmm. They can. Well, so Cordia said if you're say you just subscribed this month um, and you wanted the dry brushes that we started with with the May so box that were extras, yeah. um, you can just message Courtney and um, you'll be able to purchase um, just those dry brushes by themselves if you want. Um, we have extras of not extras of those but we have more of those and, ship for free. and then they would ship for free in your box as well so if you if you don't have because we might have started with that size one huh yeah. in may i think um in our may box this was the extra brush item so if you don't have it you can just and you want it you can message us and courtney can add it to your invoice um because i think we just finished up or what the, the august box is going to have the size eight flat around where are we August, at we'll August flat. August um, with the August box you'll have the full set of flats and then we'll be starting with the round ones mm -hmm. so if you're um, you just subscribed and you're missing those other brushes you can uh, message us and uh, Cordy can add that to your invoice if you want them or if you want more than one um, that works too so or if you want that whole set we do have the whole set um, with the Harold's brush pad with it as the Christmas in July um, special. So again, I'm just being real careful here, taking these little dust. And you can see it, I mean, it works fairly well. You just have to be patient. And now I can make these bigger back and forth strokes here across it because I don't have to worry about getting anything full of rust. Um, when I get by the tree, I want to go up and down, and it's okay that it gets on the tree, but I want to leave that crevice between the tree and the and the um, shirt sleeve with the black brown in it for its shading. Same with the top part of the sleeve here. So now I have his his whole uh, little shirt here and his little shoes. Are all covered pretty good with the rest so now with the rust I'm sorry and our next part will be doing his little hat I'm just gonna brush back and forth here um, I did the little brim in um, green so we'll just go right over the edge there so that we're leaving our brown down in that crevice where the hat meets the brim and go the other direction where the hat meets the tree and it's okay if those colors get on those other areas. We just want to build, build our rust up. So let's see, do we have anything else? Oh, Jessica says she needs ones and three. Well, just, yep, Courtney can take care of you. She'll send you a message. Thank you, I hope that um, was helpful. So. And, um, she will be sending out invoices on the first which is Saturday it takes a couple hours. and it takes um, quite a long time so you don't get it like immediately because she has to go through everyone's and and she checks all the uh, her the spreadsheets where people have stuff added on and doubles double checks everything so so I'm just dry brushing his hat here now I did his little tassel in green so I'm just gonna go across where the hat and the tassel meet and then we'll get that green later And we just work our way around. Um, we'll probably go over a week with this guy and, and the birds, but that's okay because the hedgehogs um, paint up pretty quick. But I will be doing um, a brown, more of a brown faced one, and then the cream cream faced one, just to show you that you can do those in different colors. And if you wanted extra ones, you can just message Courtney and she'll get those on your invoice too. Um, let's see, we also had the truck. We have all the truck toppers and the trucks and the campers. So if you want, if any of those will fit in your box and you want them, Courtney can take care of that on the invoice for you. We have the campers, but I didn't post 
Um, we do have the campers. Um, Courtney was going to get them posted today, but it's been a pretty busy week. Um, so she didn't get, get the what's new posted. But if you do want the campers, we do have them. And um, Lisa, I brought Courtney a new one for you today. So hopefully she gets those in the mail um, for you. She had one that she didn't it didn't pass her inspection, so I brought her a new one. Um, so we sh should be getting an invoice for that, and it'll be coming then. So you can see I have my little rust all pretty much done here on his little hat now. But I can still see a lot of brown through my rust, so I, I still need another coat. So now I'm actually going to um, come back here where I started and let all that other area dry. And we're going to do um, just build that up a little bit more so we have a nice coverage of rust. And that's really going to help our um, red be red and cover um, and maybe in three or four coats instead of five or six coats because red, red is a hard color to get to like really cover really nice. And a rust or a terracotta type color underneath it really helps that. Well, let's see what else is going on, Courtney. It's hot here. Um, worked in the yard a little bit, but not too much. It's been a busy um, bisque week this week, so I could get everything to Courtney. Um, it was probably 1.30 in the morning the last three nights that I went to bed because of the firing the kilns. So I don't go to sleep with them on. I wait till they're done. So that made the house extra warm too because yesterday um, on the day before I fired both of them. I fired the big one and then I fired the little one. So Toasty. Toasty, yep. And then we want to get on our bottoms. We don't want to forget that. We want that to look as good as the top. I think I'm going to an estate sale um, tomorrow morning. They showed pictures and there's ceramic stuff in the basement, molds in particular, and paints. Um, so who knows what we're going to find. They had a lot of the Ents, um, those gnarly looking gnomes. There was bisques of those on the shelves, so I'm hoping they have um, those molds. I do have five or six of them, but I would like some more of them. Can you order them? Cordy asked if we can order them. Yes, we can. Clay Magic has some and so does um, Creative Paradise. Yeah, that would be Creative Paradise then, you know. So I really like those um, ugly little fellas. But they're big molds. Yep, they're big molds. Well, there's some smaller ones too, oh, though. Really? Yeah, like in the 8 to 10 inch oh, range. Yep. So now we got our, you can see that his little feet now have a nice rust, a little more rust to them. And now we're going to move up to his little shirt and get that the shade of his little shoes. So we'll just keep brushing. Just you just keep building your color up slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, we're basically just letting our black brown down in, in the crevices because that's our shadowing. And I've got to be careful here by the fingers. Oh, Sunday I did take a. Cody talked me into taking a class through a webinar class with Mike Carbridge. Um, he's actually in Iola, which isn't, it's like an hour from Shano. Um, but he did a webinar on his Azure um, technique. Um, so I could pay for it on the computer. And then I actually, they sent a link and I um, logged into it and then watched. Um, he was live and then he had a recording and then he came back live as well. So I, um, watch that so that was great if you ever have the um, opportunity to sign up for his classes you you won't be disappointed he explained things really well and gave some great tips on how to um, do do techniques with with the azure markers so that was great um, Courtney's going to add the link um, in our feed so if you ever want to go check out his page um, he does clay puzzling and raku firing and um, the azure technique um, he has a, I think he's working on a, um, he has this bark type mat that you can put your clay on and it makes your clay look like it's bark and I believe he's making pumpkins with those so I'm waiting to see um, how that, he said they weren't ready to come out of the kiln when we had our class on Sunday. 
Um, so I'm waiting to see um, what those look like. I wouldn't mind taking that class. We've done some raccoon firing. Um, yep, yeah, Cordy asked if we did raccoon firing. Yes, I did um, at our local shop. Um, Patty would do raccoon firing and the horse hair firing. Um, so I do have an extra kiln that could be hooked up, up outside, but the wiring um, that I have right now is for a welder, and it's a lot smaller weight um, than what the kiln requires, so it tripped the breaker, so that didn't work at this time. So we could do that at some point, too. So I'm just dry brushing this rust on here, just like we did the um, skin tone color, and I'm just slowly but surely building it up. You can see now our shirt and our um, shoes match, but our hat is still a little different, a um, little bit lighter. It's only got that one coat, so now we're going to work on that and get that built up. So I'm using Rust right now, yep, Doc Holiday Rust, um, DH28. Duncan also has a Rust or Terracotta, you can use those colors as well. And we're basically going to cover up almost all of the black brown that's only going to be really left in the crevices. Um, so you, it does take, take some doing and you just keep brushing it and building it up, let it dry, go to the next area. Um, so we have done, um, we started our boxes last July and we've done dry brushing. Um, we've done basically non-fired techniques because um, the people seem to be looking for help with ceramic techniques and don't have access to shops. Um, so that's kind of the base behind this that we don't really do fired techniques. Um, and so we ship the bisque that's already fired and then you can um, do whatever technique we're doing or if you don't want to do that you can um, do whatever you want to do but we've done um, color washing um, we've done a crackle technique using Elmer's glue all glue let's see what else have we done we've done some chalk I'm actually thinking about doing the um, scarecrow stack with chalk I'm going to do a sample and see if I like it, and if I do, then we may even be doing the scarecrow technique with chalk, we'll have to see. Um, what else? We did metallic rub-ons. Um, we did some marbling. We did an ombre technique. Um, so basically all non-fired techniques, but a variety of different techniques and not just dry brushing. Um, and I'm always looking for um, different things to try to learn to do and share it, share it with you guys. Um, I have ladies that message me and have questions and I um, try to get back to everyone with their questions. I'll actually be, um, it'll be 40 years in October that I learned ceramics, so it's, I have a pretty good base behind me. Um, I've taken classes in Hawaii and um, Virginia and Pennsylvania and here in Wisconsin so I have taken classes with other people so different variety of things and we'll we'll keep trying to do a variety of things in our boxes um, we did different um, things with our Easter eggs we did some um, wrapped we wrapped string around them and um, did a string technique we didn't do the bubbles though, did we, with those? I can't remember what we all did with those, with the Easter eggs. It was three different things. Kind of rushed to Yeah. Um, we did the mushroom where we um, actually painted on the mushroom and inside the mushroom was glazed. The glaze, we glazed and shipped them um, to the subscribers glazed. Um, that way they could go outside. Um, so we just try to add different techniques all the time and I'm always looking for different products and things to share with you guys and um, different extras to add to the box to finish off the pieces. Um, of course the paint and the sealer is usually not included. Um, I think we did include the bottle of gloss sealer last October when we did our Halloween box so you could use it on, I don't remember what we used it on, oh putting the glitter on because um, we'll include um, different little items to finish off the boxes like glitter and pin lights and clip light and um, what else Courtney the metallic rub-ons the chalk we did as an extra 
Um, so in the beginning of the year, we included more of tools and um, products from January through April. Um, we had the ball styluses in the boxes. We had um, the chalk in the boxes. We had the metallic rub-ons in the boxes. Um, so just different, all kinds of different stuff for you guys to get exposure to and be able to come back to the videos and, and look at them for help and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, I'll keep looking for different things to do. And like I said, I'm thinking about doing the scarecrows with the chalk. We'll have to see. So we're just going to keep building up our rust here. And how are we doing on time, Courtney? Um, 8.06 so that the night goes by really fast and the week goes by really fast from Thursday to Thursday. I can tell you guys that too. Huh? Um, Courtney says even with not working. Yep, even with not working it seems worse than ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think being caught up and getting this box to you early is like major relief. <laughs> Um, except now I feel like I should be here helping you with getting your part done. So, so Wanda asked about more bisque. Yep, so I'm trying to get uh, more bisque poured. We have tons of Christmas ornaments, um, tons of fall stuff, tons of Halloween, Christmas, snowmen, um, from big stuff to little stuff. Um, we are having um, a local shop, um, sort of, We're kind of probably going to be by appointment only, only with uh, maybe one or two days a week until this COVID stuff gets um, figured out. I'm renting a house, um, so that will be um, our September big project. So there's always stuff going on. <laughs> And then we went from, um, I was just Brenda's Brushstrokes, and now we're um, Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque LLC, so I had to go to the accountant um, and, and take care of that kind of stuff, because Courtney and I are in this together now, and it's not just me um, doing craft shows, it's the whole online thing and helping you guys, and I'm actually not even doing any craft shows this year. Hopefully we can have a little bit of an open house with some crafts, I'm not sure, we'll have to see. Because I do have regular um, customers that have always gotten things from me, um, Christmas presents and things like that. So hopefully I can uh, continue with that. So our rust is looking pretty good, but I, um, if you look really closely, we can still see our brown through it. And, and we, I have a couple areas that are heavier rust than other areas, and I, and I do want it more, more solid coverage than that. So we're going to do one more layer of our rust on here yet. And let's see, I think we might quit at this point so we can pick it up um, again next week because we have a couple things to go through. So we're going to sit him aside that I can show you where we're, where we're going to get to. So you can see that on the, on the red, you cannot see much um, of the black brown through it. It's basically in, in any crevices for shadowing. And that's, that's where we want to get. Um, so that's how he's looking. So he's getting there. Um, dry brushing does take time and a little bit of patience. If you get if you get frustrated with it, my best suggestion is to like walk away from it, either for an hour or you know 20 minutes or even a, a day and come back to it. And a lot of times, um, it'll it'll just go a lot easier. I, I've had to do that with eyes. I had eyes where I painted like five times, and I, I just put it down and come back to it the next morning, and I can do it in, in one try, and they're done, and you know no problem. Sometimes you just have to um, take a, a break from it. Um, so that's where we're going with our Django. So let's see what else is next. Courtney has all the names. Do you have the eye thing? Okay, so Courtney has to print something. So if you guys can hold on, I'm going to wash out my brushes. So you can see this is our, I have my Harold's um, brush pad in there, and I've just brushed back and forth pretty gently on there, but all that rust is coming out of that brush. And it just makes, it just cleans your brushes up really nice. And you want to um, always clean your brushes up. And then I usually take it and pat them on a piece of paper towel. And then I let them, um, you can see these guys spring right back into shape. That's another reason why I like them really well. 
and I let them dry horizontally and then the next day I'll put them in a, um, my vertical container. But I usually let them dry um, horizontally so that the water doesn't get down in your ferrule and, and let your glue loose. So let's see, we got those done. And then she, Courtney, went through our post, which is for our free subscription box, right? August. For August box. So the subscribers will, you just, they just won't be invoiced. They'll just put free on it or something. Yeah, the subscriber happens to win, but it was open to everybody. So um, the sub free, one free subscription box for our anniversary was open to anyone. If you happen to be a subscriber that I draw, um, we just won't bill you. Um, for your August box. So you can see we had lots of comments and um, everyone shared and liked and Courtney's got everybody's name cut up that was in here. So everybody got your fingers crossed. Here we go. Uh, and we have somebody. Oh my goodness, we have Tammy Cornell. Oh, awesome. So uh, Tammy Cornell, you are a subscriber. She's been with us. So she's, uh, Cordy said you've been with us from the start, which I believe I remember that too. So you will get your August box for free. So that was part of our one year anniversary for you guys um, joining us and giving us a chance and we're still here. So congratulations to Tammy Cornell. You won our anniversary um, subscription box for August. Cool. All right. So then the other thing that I'm working on is um, everyone always has questions about eyes. Um, did you get it printed or has it got to print yet? Courtney's working on it. Hold, t hold tight, you guys. Um, so I have this. This is nothing more than a mushroom. And I draw circles. I drew circles on it. And I did step by step each and this is just a basic eye. Um, here's the center eye. It's the it's the basic eye that you end up with. It's the same eye that's on our um, my piggy bank video. Um, you can use this eye on snowmen, on people, um, little birds, just just about anything. It's just a nice little basic simple eye. So Cordy, as I did these, I did step one, and I told her what I did. Um, so she came and took a picture. And wrote out the instructions and then I did step two and she took the um, wrote down what I did and took the picture we have step three step four and then the final one was step five with the highlight and the comma in it and so she took a picture of that and she we are making a technique sheet um, that's gonna pop out of the printer here every minute but this is just my sample I just used a mushroom it was just um, something that I use to put them on. So even if you want to practice making eyes, just get your, some, yourself something that's round or oval. Um, draw it, you know, just trace around it. And then you can just start from one, step one, step two. It's coming off the printer. And um, so that technique sheet is going to be included in our August subscription box. So that's the extra that we're throwing in um, for our August box. It's just a basic eyes. And along with that, you can watch the video as well. So here we got our printed copy. Um, Courtney's got to adjust it a little bit, but um, this is just where it's at right now. So it's our basic um, eye chart. So you can see, we she's going to um, label these and everything, but um, I was working on it tonight yet. And so we have step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five. And then to go with that, we have the instructions, one, one through five and then she's got a couple extra here on how to do um, the highlighting in the eyes so that will be um, an extra that's coming in your august subscription box, exclusive to the box. and it um this this particular eye chart how to technique is going to be exclusive to the subscription box part of the value um, for. so it's part of our value for our um, subscription box and everyone always has questions about eyes um, so this is just a quick, simple um, little eye, and you can use it on all kinds of stuff. Um, there are other eyes out there, and I'm going to work on a more um, sophisticated or complicated eye chart, and um, we'll probably have that where you'll be able to purchase it. Um, we'll have to see how much time I have, like for making, um, looking to the right, looking to the left, looking cross-eyed, um, like turtle eyes and human eyes. Um, but this is just a little basic eye, eye chart, how to, and it goes along with our piggy bank video. So Courtney can probably share that link in there too. 
and that that's video. free. So it's actually the step by step of of this eye. It's just that these are written start instructions, and then your pictures to go with it. Um, so that is our little eye chart. That's part of our August box. So that's another little extra value to go with our little hedgehogs. So I hope you guys um, enjoy that. That's something I've wanted to do since I um, started last July, and now finally today just took the time to do it. So here's our little hedgehogs. Um, and our bigger hedgehog that'll be in our August box. So look for your invoices coming on the first and Then we'll get those guys shipped to you on the fifth and the sixth um, Cordy is going to put the link for the pre-order of the um, Hedgehogs if you just want a one-time box. We still have I think she said six of those left um, And that's because we pre-order like the brush brushes that are extra in them and th those kind of things And we can't get any more of some of those at such a short notice, but we do have like six more left um, So you could purchase a one-time or you can go and purchase the subscription and the subscription It just guarantees you uh, the box every month and maybe if you had um, a certain month, uh, maybe like you didn't like the fairies, you could skip the fairy month or what, you know, we do allow people to skip a month um, if it's something they, they just don't want to do. Like we do have a ladies um, skipping the hedgehogs. It just doesn't fit their style. So, I mean, that's fine with us. You just let us know. So that's great. And I hope you guys have a great week. And I think we're going to call it good for tonight. Um, Thank you for our anniversary month. Hope you and guys enjoyed the Christmas in July sale. I don't think we're going to have a sale now till probably Black Friday, Christmas type thing. Maybe our birthdays. Oh, Cordy said maybe something for each of our birthdays. So maybe some September and October might be something little. Mm -hmm. uh, but the next big sale would probably be around Black Friday or something like the 12 days of Christmas, something like that. So have a great week, you guys, and we'll um, catch up with you next week and work on our... Um, jangle and we'll wait to hear how you like your hedgehog boxes. Thank you everyone.